Hi, I'm Tara Schmidlin, one of the CPMC genetic counselors. Before you view your results, I want to give you some information about what the results can and cannot tell you. When viewing your results for any condition, it is important to remember that the testing done as part of the CPMC study only looks at disease risk. CPMC test results are not a medical diagnosis. Periodontitis is an infection of the gums that destroys the soft tissue and bones supporting the teeth. In its early stage, known as gingivitis, the gums become red, swollen, and prone to bleeding. In advanced or severe cases, teeth may become loose or even fall out. Periodontitis is most often diagnosed in adulthood. About 13.5% of adults between the ages of 20 and 64 have periodontitis, of which about 5% have a severe form of the disease. Periodontitis is more common among men, older adults, Hispanic and Black individuals, and current smokers. Individuals with less education and those with lower incomes are also more likely to have periodontitis. In the majority of cases, periodontitis occurs because of poor dental hygiene. Periodontitis begins with the development of plaque. Plaque is a sticky film that forms on teeth when the sugars and starches present in foods interact with the normal bacteria in the mouth. Brushing removes plaque, but plaque reforms quickly, typically within 24 hours. Plaque that remains on teeth for longer than a couple of days can harden under the gums, becoming tartar. Tartar makes plaque harder to remove and can create a reservoir for bacteria. Tartar cannot be removed by brushing and flossing alone and requires removal by a dentist or dental hygienist. When tartar is left on teeth, it can cause early stage periodontitis also called gingivitis, which is an irritation and inflammation in the gums around the base of your teeth. Ongoing inflammation in the gums eventually creates pockets between the gums and teeth, which collect plaque, tartar, and bacteria. Over time, these pockets deepen, more bacteria accumulate, and eventually tissue and bone loss occurs. If bone loss is significant, one or more teeth may be lost. Other risk factors for periodontitis include gingivitis, smoking, diabetes, older age, poor diet, stress, reduced immunity due to HIV AIDS infection, chemotherapy, or other immunosuppressive treatment, medications that reduce the output of saliva, hormonal changes due to pregnancy, oral contraceptive use, or menopause, having crooked teeth, poorly fitting bridges, defective fillings, and genetics. We mentioned that genetics are a risk factor for periodontitis. The majority of periodontitis cases are caused by a combination of multiple genes, lifestyle factors, and the environment. It is estimated that about 42% of the risk of periodontitis in the Caucasian population is due to differences in genetic risk factors, while the remaining 58% of the risk is due to differences in non-genetic risk factors. Signs and symptoms of periodontitis can include swollen gums, sensitive teeth or painful chewing, new spaces developing between teeth, loose teeth, bright red or purple colored gums, gums that are tender to the touch, gums that pull away from the teeth, making the teeth appear longer than normal, pus between teeth and gums, bad breath, bad taste in the mouth, a change in the way your teeth fit together when you bite, and a change in the fit of partial dentures. If you have any of these symptoms, or if your gums are puffy, red, and prone to bleeding, make an appointment to see your dentist. Untreated periodontitis can lead to tooth loss and has also been associated with other serious health conditions like coronary artery disease, stroke, low birth weight babies, poorly controlled diabetes, and respiratory disease. Periodontitis is diagnosed based on your symptoms and an exam of your mouth. A dentist will look for a buildup of plaque and tartar and will also check to see how easily your gums bleed. A dentist may also use a special metal probe to measure the depth of the groove between your teeth and your gums. Several measurements are taken at different sites in the mouth to determine the severity of periodontitis. X-rays may also be taken to look for bone loss. Periodontitis can largely be prevented. The following steps can help prevent periodontitis. Brush your teeth after every meal or snack, floss daily, have dental cleanings every six to 12 months, use a soft bristled toothbrush, replace your toothbrush or electric toothbrush head every three to four months, 
Use an electric toothbrush, which may be better at removing tartar and plaque than a manual toothbrush. Use a mouthwash to help reduce plaque that develops between teeth. And ask your dentist about supplementing your brushing and flossing with an interdental cleaner, such as a dental stick or dental pick. Now let's talk specifically about the CPMC results and genetic risks for periodontitis. Studies have shown that a particular genetic variant called RS1143634 is associated with an increased risk for periodontitis in individuals who have one or two copies of this variant. This variant is relatively common in the general population. About 45% of the Caucasian population has at least one copy of this variant. Remember that we all have two copies of every gene. We inherit one copy from our mother and one from our father. This means that for every genetic variant the CPMC study looks at, you can have either zero, one, or two copies. Your CPMC results will tell you how many copies of this gross variant you have. Your periodontitis results tell you about the impact of a risk variant on your risk to develop periodontitis. Having one or two copies of this risk variant increases your risk of periodontitis compared to individuals who have no copies of the risk variant. Having two copies of a non-risk genetic variant means that your risk to develop periodontitis is lower compared to individuals who have one or two copies of the risk variant. Remember, periodontitis is a complex disease, which means that it is caused by a combination of genetic variants and the environment. No single genetic variant causes periodontitis, so no single genetic variant will completely predict your risk for periodontitis. Results of CPMC testing alone do not diagnose periodontitis or rule out the chance of developing periodontitis in the future. Genetic variant information can help estimate your risk of periodontitis. However, other risk factors like your family history or lifestyle may have a greater impact on your risk than any individual genetic variant. We may learn of other genetic variants that influence your risk of periodontitis in the future. As we learn more, your estimated genetic risk for periodontitis may change. We'll keep you updated on changes through the CPMC web portal. For more information, consider sharing your CPMC results with your healthcare provider. You can also contact a CPMC genetic counselor, read information on the CPMC health condition page, or attend a CPMC educational event.